Gwyf Galera Cordia Agus Tófoil Tarot. Welcome to be my guest with me, Mary Honan, on Lear Media TV, supporting the Samaritans, Limerick and Tipperary. And my very lovely guest today is Carrie Roosval, all the way from Ballantyre in County Dublin. It's a great, great Irish name, uh, Carrie. Yes, <laughs> good place to be. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, Dublin is great and they're very welcoming people up there. Absolutely. With a great sense of humour. I'll tell you a story here now. I am born in Norway. I have grown up in Sweden, but now I have come home because Ireland is home now. Isn't and it funny I'm very happy people, here. Isn't it funny how people feel like that? My dad lived in England all his life. He was born in England. And once he came home and after about five years, he could never have gone back because the pace of life was too fast for him. Yes, yes. In, so in, in London. Yeah. Uh, he just adjusted to Ireland so much. But you have an extraordinary story, Kerry, and one, yeah. one I've actually written about in my doctoral uh, research and book, and it's the Lebensborn program, yeah. uh, which Lebensborn meaning spring of life. Um, but maybe you, uh, you're you going to read a piece from your yes. book, Nowhere's Child. Yeah, Nowhere's Child. And this book was made by me and Naomi Linehan, because yeah. the nice English for me. Because if I have written something in English, you couldn't read that. <laughs> so here, my friends, is the beginning. My name is Carrie. I am an ordinary person, except for one thing. I was born at the age of 64. I was five foot four inches tall and weighed 154 pounds. My hair was gray and my hands very old. Unlike other newborns, I did not cry. There was no one there to mother me. So I was quiet, but I cannot stay quiet. I don't know how much time I have left, how long or short the rest of my life will be. It is time to tell my story and I will try to tell it the best I can. That's an absolutely perfect introduction. It really is, Carrie, and I'm not being, I'm not being, um in any way uh, uh, patronizing. Um, it is a truly remarkable story, one that I have not actually interviewed anybody um, uh, uh, with your story before. I've interviewed many, many Holocaust survivors yeah. and children of Holocaust survivors. And the other day I interviewed the um, Lieutenant Colonel who entered Bergen-Belsen, the first British officer to enter yeah. the camp. I interviewed his son, but you're the first person who is um, a Lebensborn, meaning spring of life. Yeah. And these were children who were um, part of, uh, if you like, uh, a project created by the Nazis to, yeah. to integrate uh, or to create, if you like, the yeah. perfect Aryan race. I will tell you the story behind this because here is the man, yep. Heinrich Heinrich Himmler. Himmler. and he was the, um, was the man behind this Lebensborn. And I tell you now what he said on a meeting. Obviously in such a mixture of people, there will be always be some racial good types. Therefore, I think that is our duty to take their children with us to remove them from their environment, if necessary, by robbing or stealing them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Either we win over any good blood that we can use for ourselves and give it a place in our people, or we will destroy them. Yeah, it's funny. It's funny, Carrie, um, from what I know of, of, of the Lebensborn program, uh, it, 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 the mindset of the Nazis are, uh, was just so extraordinary that, you know, if a Jewish child, for instance, was blonde and blue eyed and 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 
measured the the measurements yeah. that they took yeah. of the child if they actually um, looked or suited their view of the of Aryan perfection they were kidnapped from their families and reared as Nazis or reared as German and therefore purebred um, on many of them finding out much later in life that they were actually born to German uh, to Jewish parents or gypsy parents but yeah. they just had the right appearance that would actually pass them and the Nazis could overlook the fact that they were um, or otherwise gypsy. Yeah, they'd use them for experiments. Or, exactly, yeah. Yeah, that was most of it because, and also because they have killed so many po people over the Holocaust. So the Nazis needed new people because they were nearly lack of them. And there they come up with this Aryan race. Yeah. Because uh, after the 64 year old uh, person, then I started to really research this to see why on earth could this happen and how could they do this to the small children? I was uh, 10 days, then they kidnapped me from my mother and she hadn't a clue what happened to me. I just disappeared. I come to an um, orphanage uh, outside Oslo and there I was one month and then come Himmler and look at children and he say, oh, this is a good one. I take them and then and then they took me and sent me to a home in Germany. It's called Hoherholst. And there I should be fed and very well looked after and so on. And what they didn't do was they didn't cuddle us. So I have no of this warmth a little sh child need to grow up properly. No, no. So, so, so that was the Aryan. We should be the mother and father of the new generation. But she then the war ended. We <coughs> were worth nothing. Absolutely nothing. We, we, from to be Aryan, we were no one, and no one wanted us. But the Norwegian government, uh, post World War II, when when many people were coming back and finding out that they had been um, uh, part of this breeding program and that they were not uh, part of the, their their mothers were mostly Norwegian women and the fathers were either uh, 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 foot soldiers, as you found out, your your dad yeah. possibly, um, or SS um, members yeah. of the SS. And they were ostracized amongst their own communities. They were, they were, they were neither Swedish or Norwegian or Scandinavian in any way. They were, they were pushed out. They weren't wanted in their village um, because of they having any liaison or considered collaborators with the Nazis yeah. by virtue of the fact that they gave birth to children with members of the either the, yeah. the SS or um, the yeah, even soldiers. If even if they were raped in Norway, they were reacted because they were perpetrators. So that was the reason I didn't come to Norway. They took us back to Sweden. And that was actually illegal because yeah. between yeah. Norway and Sweden, they had a law that these things should happen. So what happened to us, 31 children who come to Sweden was, they took all our paper and hidden them. That was the reason we hadn't a clue until I was 64, what was really happening. But um, going back to the, uh, the orphanage, and I know that uh, when you were, one thing that struck me when I was researching you was the mm. fact that they said that you said that they used to just open the door and push a child through um, to, to their adopted parents and you made, made for Simon. Yeah. Your adoptive father. But before that was 
that I was in an orphanage and they come a couple from Stockholm and um, they should adopt me and they took me away. That was a military man and he died. So the lady who had me there gave me back to the orphanage. Oh. So then I was three years old here. It's, the story is a little bit complicated, but then I was three years old. They, I was in another orphanage and they put me inside the door, closed the door and I should go around to show like they do with dogs, you know? Yeah. Uh, and what happened was in the corner back there in the room, I saw the nicest man with the lovely eyes and smile. lovely Simon. Yeah, and that was Simon. And he and I walk up to him and I I go up on his lap, put my arm around him, and he say, he said, I don't go home without this little girl. She is mine. Oh. And think of that now, Mary, that they didn't know anything about me. They took me on as the little child that was without ask questions. And that's very brave because they hadn't a clue where well, I very was. Right as well. It's very right as well. No child, uh, no, no child chooses how they come into the world. No. You know, we, we all, we, we're all an accident of our birth. Yeah, but I mean, the, 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 if, if you adopt a little girl or a boy, you can retrace a little bit where, what country they come from on anything. Here, they didn't have anything. They didn't know what, if I have some illness or something. So that was, they were very brave and I really, really appreciate them for that. And how did you get on with them um, going forward? Did you have a positive experience? Yeah. The, my uh, here we have two sides of a coin you know my father was blonde and very nice my mother was dark haired and very dark and very not really friendly but see i had my father and his mother looked took me under their wing so i learned what love is lucky for me that, but that's why I'm, 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 I'm looking at you and, you know, you talked earlier on about getting no compassion or no hugs or anything mm. in the orphanage. And I'm, I'm thinking that you were an example of whether, uh, you know, compassion and and honesty can be nature. It can be nature or nurture, because for somebody who didn't get um, uh, compassion and love, you ooze compassion, uh, Carrie. Yeah, you but uh, you I had to learn. I had to learn these things. So because I could protect myself ah, like that. But if someone did this, how on earth will I react to that? That was new. I have to learn all these things. But see, uh, you know, it seems to me that your grandparents, your adopted grandparents yes. were re remarkably instrumental in your in your in you being the woman you are today. Yeah, yeah they saved and me. Simon. Yeah, Simon, they saved me. So that's the reason I come forward because you know that love is stronger than hate. So there we have it. And you know, I mean, at the end of the day, your biological, as they use the term now, biological mother was less of your mother than, than your grandparents were, in a sense. They did the mothering. And yeah, they did, everything. yeah. And also Simon, he was really, he, he could do so much. And, and we were out in the nature and he taught me all about these um, simple things in life. And I'm very grateful for that. And see, my real mother, I met her um, then I was 21. One twenty-two, because of the Red Cross helped me to train. You contacted. Her. You were a nurse, an auxiliary nurse. Yes. And you contacted the Red Cross, and remarkably, they knew exactly who your mother was. Yes. Can you believe it? And, and it's just. But they hadn't been asked the question, and because of that, they hadn't contacted me. So I had to do the contacts because I asked because what that's 
come up was then I was a nurse auxiliary the nurse come and said oh Carrie uh, where are you born and I was oh, no no I don't I don't know of course you know where you're born all all people know that and I said not me okay she said you can work here for three months and see if we like you and I was there for 10 years so there we go they had that story there clean so it's so that was, I was curious, who am I? So I started to write letters and phone for the authority in Sweden. And everybody closed the door in front of my face and said, we haven't a clue, we don't know nothing. No, 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 no. It was like as if there was a, a, a barrier put down. Yes, they really put down. In many respects, perhaps they were... Do you think perhaps they were in some way trying to protect you as well from the knowledge that, that no, because no, it might have protected you? Protect themselves. Yeah. Because that was illegal until it's come up. You see, they protect themselves. I hadn't the, me was I was nothing. I didn't have a passport with with um, it was said uh, that I was a stranger. It's I, funny, Anna Freed, uh, Anna Freed, the, the, the dark haired yeah. singer in ABBA. Yeah, uh, but the, the we have not she's the Lebensborn. Yeah, but we have not the same. No, 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 she wasn't. She was with her, um, uh, she fled to Sweden with her. Um, her mother. Uh, with her grandmother. Yeah. Yeah, so that, we have not the same story at all. No. No, so my story is, is Totally different from hers. But you, but uh, what happened once you found out that you were actually um, Lebensborn? Yeah, can you believe it? Because then the only thing the Red Cross said, we know who your mother is and we will see that you will meet her. And I was over 20. And I was, oh, geez, that's who. Wow. And I didn't say anything about her, absolutely nothing. I didn't know a word of her. So I was thinking, but I'm curious. This is yeah, of course. Right. Yeah. Of course. So I think because they organized that I could go to Norway to meet her. So that's they paid a ticket. for you. They paid the ticket and everything. But they could have told me a little bit more because I was yeah. so scary. But yeah, I, I took the train and I went to Oslo and I went to her address. And you can paint a picture of me standing in front of that big house with all the black windows. And I was standing, oh, well, will I go home or what happened? So, but I took, I took a step forward and the door opened. And a woman, we were a mirror image of each other. Come, open the door and said, come in, Carrie. I, I see that it's you. And that broke the ice a little bit because we were so similar. But, but, there, was, but there was nothing there other than uh, appearance. There yeah, was, yeah, there, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was no emotional connection. No, there cannot be that. I'm, I'm a grown up woman and had, I had my family and, uh, and things. So, so, but it was nice to have met her because the war had destroyed her. And they did so many cruel things. So they even caught the nipples of her. They were so cruel, the, the Nazi. So can you believe it? She was not, she was not, um, she had a depression, of course. I, how can she survive all this? Because if the war hadn't been, she had been a very, very nice woman, but the war destroyed her. And she had a child before. Yeah. And before this, you, who was yeah. over a boy. Yeah, a boy, a pair. And he, uh, his father was killed during the war. war. So there she was. You can think so many loss. And then she had a girl and the girl was taken from her. She was stolen. Program on Did TV you ever at the moment? And it's uh, finding long lost family members. No, 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 no. And some people, when they meet their mother for the first time after years, 
there's absolutely no connection. No, and, no. And then others feel as if, oh my God, I, 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 I instantly felt a connection with her. I instantly, when mothers are forced to give up their children, and they're, they're, and they're faced with their past or remembering their, having all these memories. All those memories must have come back to her. Absolutely. I, I was, remember her about the war. And that was the reason that many women will not, they wouldn't like to meet their children. Mm. So I was very lucky that she will, will meet me because then I have a face and I know how she is and so on. And that's it. That was yeah. enough for me yeah. because I understand I have my life and my adopted family. So that was okay. You were happy. Yeah. You were happy. But it was interesting um, what I was reading um, in your piece that everyone, every child born on Adolf Hitler's birthday became his godchildren or yes. he became the godfather. My God, was there, was there, any, was there any end to the man's narcissism? No, it wasn't. He was obsessed. And he even had hens in his garden who should be very good and nearly Aryan because if they were not good, he docked them. So that should be re really, everything should be clean. He was obsessed with this. I know. I've, I, I found out halfway through my own research that um, th that my grandmother's name, my great grandmother's name was Jacob, which was uh, and that she was, we believe that she was Jewish, but she married out of her faith. She married a Protestant minister okay. in, Wales, in Wales and under the 1939 racial laws, the Nuremberg laws, I would have been defined as a Michelin second degree and subject to the same restrictions and the same treatment as if I was, you know, born to Jewish parents. Yeah. Um, the fact that you had any bit of Jewish blood in you at all, you were tainted. Yeah, but I mean, whatever blood I had after this war, it was nothing. I was treated like if I was Jewish as well. And worse, because the, the, the neighbors and all of these who lived in the area that I grew up never accepted me because I was an alien. So I was lucky for me, the children were very nice and we played a lot, but I wasn't allowed to go into the family's house because I was alien. But when you were in your 20s and you were finally confronted, not just with the woman who was your biological woman, yeah. woman who had given you birth, you never met your father. You never knew. No, we don't know who he is. We don't know. Yeah. Nobody well, knows who he is. No. And you probably would never know. But the no. thing is, once you were confronted with the knowledge that, well, one, you, you had found your mother, your birth mother, um, and, but then that you were part of what uh, is now called the Lebensborn program. Yes. Um, had you any idea as somebody who obviously probably wasn't um, researching that area of history at the time, that was probably an alien word to you, or did you have a concept of, a, of the Lebensborn program before no. you? No, no, no. I was 64 years old and I yeah. know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, no, I know. Yeah. And also then they did a, a television program here about me. It's... Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, the, they have a lot of research, you know, and they can do things. They couldn't find it. And we have um, Vivian Castello, who is a historian, mm -hmm. tried to help me because she could write letters in, in German and so on nothing whatsoever come out of it. So that's a little bit of a sad side. I not have the whole story. I have the half story, but I have to be happy about that. Some of the children have nothing. This is it. And the Norwegian government um, were forced to apologize. Yeah. Uh, uh, because safe to say there were thousands and thousands, if not, 
more yeah. than thousand, tens of thousands of people who were affected by this. Yeah, I and tell you, you know, it's not just the children that were affected. The, uh, I, I suppose in some respects, the parents were, the, the women were res- uh, affected, especially women who were raped or women who were yeah. tortured. The women, they, they, didn't, they didn't do anything for the women. That was only the children. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So what happened was that they, um, the, then the war was over. The German put money to the Norwegians for every child that the child should have. But the Norwegian took the money themselves. And that was that, that then that was research that really come up, you know. So yeah. I had money from, from them. Then I lived here. And what we did was we took out an Irish citizenship, Ben and I, my husband and I, and then I repaired the kitchen. So every time you walk around the kitchen yeah. and look at, uh, look at your Irish passport, it's a reminder yeah. of yeah. what the Norwegians had to pay. pay, pay. Yeah, they had to pay that bill for me. And uh, the kitchen, it's, German and it's perfect. <laughs> so, you actually go for a German kitchen? Yes, can you believe it? I, I am um, <laughs> the irony of it. Every time you're chopping, you're chopping your food. Yeah, you uh, you should think this. My history now is history. <laughs> it's what I lived through. The his is history. So whatever goes now, it go forward. I don't live for yesterday, not for tomorrow. I live here and now. And that's how it should be. Because I cannot do anything about what happened before this. And I haven't a clue what happened in the future. So here I am, here and now, and shop my vegetables in my German kitchen. And you just hammer away on the counter and, th- and uh, 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 get in your own back. Yeah, this is, oh yeah, this is okay. So I, I love my food and uh, my kitchen and everything. So And also that um, the first, the first uh, years of my life was a mess. Yeah, I can, the imagine, last, can absolutely imagine. Yeah, and the, but the last year now, what I have left seems to be very nice. At what state? Well, you know, your first husband was very ill. Yeah. And um, and then you met um, Sven. Yes. And, and ten years after this other story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was so, and I was oh, I should be sitting there in my lovely flat, and I should grow old myself. And here we go. And then I met Sven, and everything was upside down. I really met a lovely man. Is Sven Norwegian or Swedish? Oh, no, he is a Swedish blonde. He's a Swedish blonde. We have one of the guys working with us here in the station. He's Dirk de Klein, and he's from the Netherlands. But, of course... He speaks Swedish and he speaks, and a friend of mine, her husband was from Finland and his, yeah. his parents were from Sweden. Yeah. But he was from Finland, so he spoke Swedish and Finnish and Dutch and German and Russian. And I just envy, uh, envy people from the Nordic countries because they seem to, like the Swiss, have a grasp of everyone's language. Yeah, yeah. We but the, the Swedish, we have to learn English than we were small in the school, but um, yeah, yeah, that was it's very good. I had a, a little bit, bit of good knowledge of English when I come here to Ireland, and uh, we come to Ireland because Van found the dream job. So and then we like it, so we stayed. So what was Sven doing in Ireland? He what is a con- computer developer computer developer so he was badly needed here so and yeah. because they have special knowledge some of them and they will be headhunted you know and did uh what year did you come to ireland 1997 yeah 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 well did you t- uh, when you met at what stage did you tell sven your story 
And were you worried about telling? No, absolutely not. Because at the, I mean, I have not done anything wrong. So no, 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 no. no. Yeah. Of course you haven't. But you know, as a child who grew up always feeling as a nowhere, nowhere child yeah. that I don't belong to anybody, um, uh, which you shouldn't have, because you're, you, you know, I mean, as I say, nobody um, chooses the family they they're no, brought no. up in. You can. You can choose your friends, but you can't choose your family. No, no. Um, and um, some of us I are lucky. Chose, I chose my father. Remember that? That was I who chose him. You chose you. You certainly did when you chose yes. Simon. Um, you, you, uh, that. <laughs> you, you chose him, but yeah. But, you know, I mean, um, uh, Sven was Sven was the was the the love of your life. Yeah, and because we we had we were connected immediately. He told his story. He had lost his father, and he was three years old because of cancer, you know, and so on. And then I told my story and everything. And he said to me, "Because you have had such a hard life, I will do the best I can for you, so that it will be good." And he does. I wish I met somebody like that. Yeah, he's 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 special. He's really special. So I'm so happy that I have him. So um, you you did. At what stage did you decide to put it all down in writing, a, into a book? Yeah, that was actually <laughs> that was actually Naomi's doing because she worked for um, um, Pat Kenny show. Yeah. And he asked, because her mother had heard a story about me in, in one of the talks I do. Yeah. And then she went home to her daughter and say, I have a person you should meet. And then Naomi asked Pat Kenny, can I go and interview Carrie for the radio program? And he said, yeah, you can do that, but I'm not sure we will take that on. <laughs> then he come back and show this. He said, yeah, if it's something we should do, is this. So of yeah. course we send it. And then people phoned in so much. So the the telephone broke for them. Wow. Yeah. And then they said, order a book, order a book. So Naomi come back to me and said, will we do a book? And I took a deep breath and said, OK. So we were sitting here, Naomi and I. We were drinking tea, we laughed, and we cried together. Because all these emotional, of course, and you do a job like that, come back. And it's also a healing process. But I couldn't have done it myself. We, we, she, I doubled so in age as her. But we were so close, you can't believe it. And you, you were, you were lucky that uh, I suppose you attribute, you know, you, uh, you, you, uh, you have a son, Roger, and yes, yes. He's, a great, he's a great gift and a great joy to you. Oh, absolutely! Oh, yes, he worked for the Japanese embassy in Stockholm, Sweden. Wow, he Japanese, and I don't understand a word of so Japanese. He never really like. <laughs> <laughs> But, but he is very nice, so he speaks Swedish to me. And he also likes Sven very much. But you, you, yeah, well, that's, that's very important that, 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 you, that your, your husband is accepted by your son. Oh, yes, he was. They had met before Sven met me. He was friend with Roger. Oh, right. Yeah, they was in the same book club. Isn't that isn't that amazing? But you had no idea of where Ireland was. I find that when no, I, I had a, I had to look that you had no, you had to look the map up to find where Ireland was. <laughs> you would not know this country at all. Yeah. Are we not? We we seem to think in Ireland that everybody in the world should know us, and and then people say yeah. Ireland. And you look and you say, no, Ireland. And they say, oh, you're, you're, you're English. And well, I'm English, but yeah, they, yeah, yeah. they seem to think that um, uh, everyone in Ireland is England. And 
until they find out, look up a map and then find but, that but, we're, we're just out here in the Atlantic Ocean, an island. It's on the a little island with the sea around. But what happened, this has happened to Sweden as well. Not many people around the world know what that little country is. So, so, so that's go around, you know. We are familiar what's around us, but not really further out, really. So... Yeah. So what what is kind of um, your plans for the future? I know you've you really consider yourself an Irish woman now, um, Carrie. Yes. I'm really more Irish than the Irish themselves. And you can see behind me, I am a lot into crafts because the crafts take a lot of if you have anxiety or afraid or the COVID or everything. If you do craft, you are into that and you forget. And I have made 17 quilts. Oh, carry For the sick children in Crumlin. Wow. Because, you know, I mean, I've always wanted to know how to. I was only talking yesterday to, I'm involved um, uh, uh, with Irish dancing. Okay, uh, yes. I judge and teach it. But I had a guy on yesterday who's, oh, he's an incredible dancer and he's also the lead dancer in Riverdance. Okay. Yeah. We're talking about creativity and how no matter what, if you're a creative person, you'll, it'll always find a way of coming out. And, okay. and, and when, you know, especially some, somebody like you who has such a, a diversely tragic and happy childhood. Do you know um, that? Have you ever found, you know, that you're uh, that you'd like to tell your story, maybe in a quilt? No, but I have told my son his story in a quilt. So he had that, and I said that, and I gave it over to him. That um, you maybe can think of your mother now, and then, then you have this. And he said, oh, yes, he said, it's you in every stitch, mommy. Every stitch. Um, because we are, um, we are in a, in a sense, we're all a tapestry. We're yes. all, we're, we all make up this tapestry that is uh, humanity. And now was it important to do this for the sick children in Kremlin? That's, and all these small little uh, quilts that I have the children who have cancer, you know, and, and, and everything. No, I understand. I understand that. I'm an artist myself. I did, yeah. I, I, I trained in, in the art college here in Limerick, oh. um, at the Limerick College of Art and Design. So I understand that need to create. And somebody like you, um, you're never lost when you can create something. You're never, no. you never have a quiet moment. Your brain is never silent. No when you're a creative person. Um, I mean, I would love to, I mean, I'm hoping to do a postdoctoral research. And one of the things I hope to do down the line is to put my research into a quilt. Okay. And it's funny, but it's a giant uh, quilt I'd love to create, but I have to start learning how to create a small one first. Oh yeah, you do a prototype and then you, but then you are keep going as I do with, I think of the children and I think of how they freezing and how it thinks is. And then I come up with a pattern and I, and I also do little figures on the quilts and so on. It's so and do you do it by hand or do you do it? I do um, by hand and machine quilt. It depends on which, which mode I'm in. I have to learn how to use a machine. Um, my godmother made her own wedding dress and um, and she finished it at five o'clock the morning she was getting married. Yeah, yeah. I have mine. Then I'm married then. I had um, the, the dress 11 o'clock and the marriage was two. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Breda was coming up. Breda yeah. was coming up on the bus and my grand aunt said to her, isn't one of you getting married today yeah. at 12? And she said, yes, it's me. And she and she and she she still she had only finished her dress at five a.m. <laughs> um, the morning of, and it was stunning, absolutely stunning dress. But how is COVID affecting you? Yeah, that's the because 
the lockdown i mean the, the, the lockdown and because i'm i have asked my have we we are this is sven and me here that's okay and see we can entertain each other he can consult me with the quills and and he is into model railway oh my god you're a match made in heaven Yes. So he's doing the model railways and you're yeah, and I come people. and help him and we, we do small houses together and all these things. And he helped me with the quilts because he said, no, no, you cannot do this and that and so on. So so we really are a match in heaven. <laughs> we certainly are. I mean, I used to, my mother used to say to me, the man that that's that the man that's for you hasn't been. Is uh, has isn't born yet, and his father is dead. She said, yes. "You'd need to sculpt him in front of you." She said, "To be pleased, I, you know, I, I'm looking for a man like that, like Sven, somebody yes. that you can actually be happy being in, uh, locked up with yes. for yes. all this length of time." And he took now the early retirement, and I'm so happy because he's younger than I am. So. Uh, I'm so happy that we can have you're, these times. You're, you're what they call a cougar. What does that mean? Uh, 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 I'm, I'm not actually what it's a woman that that that, that marries a younger man that finds yes. herself yes. a younger man. Woo. But he is more um, uh, older than I am because he's very he's very good and so on. I'm more like hoo hoo. <laughs> Yeah, but you're living your childhood now. Yeah. And, and you, yeah. And your, your, your creative work is just stunning. Yeah. So your, 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 your crafts are just stunning. I have a little bit of creation I have made. <laughs> so, but it must be affecting you, the lockdown, it, it, or isn't it at all? Yeah. It's, what, what I miss is the swimming pool. I miss my swimming pool. In uh, in that group because no. I cannot go. That's what I, I missed. Otherwise, it's it's okay. Looking back on your life, um, uh, Carrie, um, is there anything that you would have wished would have been different? It might sound like a strange question. To yeah, but... Are you happy with you know? Had your life been? Had you not been a Lebensborn child, had you not been put into an orphanage, mm. maybe you might never have met Simon. Maybe you oh. might never have met, met his, his parents and then ultimately met Sven. Mm. But you see, if you think of, of, of that, now, if I had been a normal person born in Norway with the family there, there is a good family. I maybe have had a good life there as well. It's a good family. I met my cousins and everything, and we have we are very in, in contact with each other now. Oh, that's interesting. Your your biological cousins. Yes. You've met, and, and they they really accept me, and I'm so happy about that. Is that that that's obviously very important to everyone that 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 they're accepted. I mean, how should that be if they were thinking as the other nor when then they are they I mean they treat us as trash. That could easily have happened because they have learned from childhood that the German uh, offsprings you shouldn't deal with, but these are bigger than that. I just, I, I, I just find it incomprehensible that a, a nation of people that is so great uh, in many respects, so uh, technologically great, engineering wise, and mm -hmm. um, uh, I mean, we had a company here in Limerick called Krups, and you know, my friend when she was seventeen bought my mother an electric carving knife. And we still have the electric carving knife. Crops is gone, but they, they did themselves out of business because everything they made lasted a lifetime. You never had to read. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is the problem. And, you know, uh, and uh, as a dancer, I was in Germany. Uh, I danced in 11 cities in, um, in Eastern Germany and then 11 cities in, mm. in West Germany before the wall came down. 
And I was struck by the cleanliness, the organization, the tidiness, the mm. beauty the, uh, of the, the country and the, the, and the, the people. Yeah. And, you know, the, and, and then later on when I started doing research, I found it incomprehensible to believe that within that beautiful country, absolutely visually spectacular country, there could be such monstrous ideas and yeah. monstrous actions. You know that they were not uh, not healthy. They were. You know that Hitler himself had syphilis. That's right. Well, yeah. they, and they, syphilis they, goes to the head, and you, oh, you are the best in the world. You know that's it. But you know that that with respect um, is you know there you know people say. Oh, he was. I these people were either mad or they were either bad. Um, and there's a quote I, I can't remember who said it, but that you know, um, not everybody who committed these atrocities were evil. Many of them were ordinary people, oh, yeah. and most dangerous are the functionaries ready and willing to do anything that they're asked without question you know you can kind of uh say oh you know well he was mad or he had syphilis or he had this he had that that's just an excuse they were they were ordinary people who did monstrous acts in many yeah, cases yeah. and and that makes them worse yeah and do what that, they were doing. yeah and if the people who was good as you say there may be if they didn't do the duty they were killed so they had to do what because what the what the power man said they had to do otherwise they were killed and there were men and women were killed because they tried to have their own say and i tell you one story here now yeah it was a little girl coming here and she had to do a research for a project at school and she was 15 years old yeah he asked me, Carrie, she said, if are you hating the hate the Germans? And I said, No, my love, I don't do that because I have been to Germany now, then I'm older and be treated very well. And even a lady in Berlin asked me to come and stay with her. I hadn't a clue who yeah. it was, and it was lovely. So and so the girl was very happy that I didn't have anything against the Germans. And I said, the people who I am against, they are dead. Now we live and see the people who, who are there now. It's good. But Carrie, with respect, the way I, I, I kind of, I suppose, look at it is, and I agree with you, you know, the, we're not our brother's keeper. And, you know, you can't blame a nation for what happened um, 75 years ago no, no, no. Who, are, who are born now. And they are making huge strides in trying to understand what went on and trying to ensure yeah. it can ha can't happen again. But going back to um, what I said there a minute ago, to say that, you know, to, when people say, oh, he, he, Hitler must have been insane or Hitler must have been blah, blah, blah exonerates in a sense uh, or, or uh, dissolves what, what he did and what many of them did. We're all just a hair's breadth away from doing exactly the same thing, oh, yeah. the right or the wrong uh, set of circumstances. Yeah. We, could, we could all be victims or we could all be perpetrators given, put in the wrong situation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, go mixing with the wrong people, believing in the wrong ideological views because of, of friends or because of peer yeah. pressure. And we need people like you, people like Inga, Dr. Inga Auerbacher and um, people like John Wood, who I spoke to yesterday, to constantly reinforce within us the importance of the dangers of bystander, the dangers of sitting back and thinking, oh, we're comfortable here in Ireland. It's not going to happen us. But of course, it will, it can happen yeah. us. 
And that's the reason I am going to continue this story. I go to schools and I talk about this and we talk about this stupid bullying. That's my thing at schools. So, and also because we keep this alive, we maybe can save someone. And I said, if I can save one person, I have not lived for nothing. It's but not you know, it, 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 the message, uh, Carrie, is much deeper even, you know, um, is much broader than the Holocaust or the Shoah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 you know, it, it comes into all aspects of our life. If people, yeah. you know, I, I have, uh, I suppose my life is dedicated to remembering um, the victims of of World War II. And that includes people like you, Carrie, who are yeah. victims, yeah. people and, uh, uh, you know, who, who didn't choose what way they were brought into this world yeah. and were also victims, in a sense, of, of, of the Nazi regime. Absolutely. And, and you, know, I've, you know, the books I looked at were comics and fairy tales and allegories and time travel novels, all written about children during World War II. Oh, now, these books can be used in schools to look at rival gangs, uh, to look at the subject of bullying, to look at the subject of exclusion. Mm. The boy in the striped pajamas can be looked at. Mm. The barrier can be the barrier between the, the, the cool kid in school and the child that's, that's coming in with poor, with no, hardly, um, with, nothing in the line of fashion yeah. um, and he's ostracized or he's kept outside of the fold and you have the cool gang and you have the not so cool boy in the class. So, you know, you can talk about, uh, you can use uh, uh, these books to introduce very young children to the uh, importance of welcoming and embracing yeah. people who look or they think are different. Yeah. And then and, gradually they can start to learn about the Holocaust through these books. Yeah. And I can tell you also, because I have been bullied by the teacher at school when I was a child, yeah. the children I talk to now, they know Carrie had been in these situations. So they take it on much deeper. This is it. Of that. And they really try to save me. They are so good. <laughs> Yeah. Well, Carrie, um, you have been truly an inspiration. Um, you're, you're just, I, I never thought I was actually going to meet somebody who was, I mean, I have, as I say, I have researched Lebensborn. I was struck by the fact that mm -hmm. so many children were just, it, it had nothing to do with et ethnicity at the end of the day, whether a person was a gypsy or Jewish or um or any um, ethnicity that was went against the the uh, Nazis' ideals of the perfect race, as long as you looked and you measured, yes. physically measured perfectly mm. in scale, they were willing to overlook how gracious were they, but they were willing to overlook uh, the fact that you might have Jewish parents or Gypsy parents because yeah. they could steal you. Yeah, yeah, they could, yeah. And hand you to a uh, German family or an uh, and an orphanage, as I was seeing. And yeah. an orphanage. Yeah. And they even built hospitals, Lebensborn hospitals, where oh. children were actually uh, all born. Every child that was born in that hospital was a Lebensborn child. Yeah. And they, they were um, christening on, on the, they took them the small child and, and the soldier hold them on a cushion and, and then the soldier swore that this child will be a very good German citizen and, and follow the rules of Hitler. Yeah, this, is, this is worse than you can think. Well, it, they were insane times, but they are, um, they're never in the past. We're only, as I say, we're only a hair's breadth. The whole yeah. society is only a hair's breadth from people having to make similar choices. Tomorrow, it might be the Jew, Jewish victim or the gypsy victim or the, the, disa the disabled yeah. or the gay person yeah. uh, mightn't be the victim. It could be somebody else. So it behoves all of us 
to yeah. not become bystanders, to yeah. stand up when we see an injustice being done. And that's the rem that I will remind of. This can happen and it can be like that. But I'm so sad in my heart that the people never learn because things going on and on and on. And so I, if, but I have to work in the small little world and see what I can do there. And you're doing a great job. You're doing a great job talking about your story yeah. and creating and doing, uh, uh, you're doing your crafts. Yeah. And, yeah. and being, uh, being a companion and a wife to Sven. Yes, that's, that's not so hard, I tell you. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? Yeah. Oh, God, you're making me jealous. Love is bigger, love is bigger as anything. Oh, you're making me jealous. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you say thank you in Norwegian? Um, tak so mycket. Tak so mycket. Yeah. Tak so mycket. Yeah. Well, Shindera Leshan Klor, that's the end of the show for today. Until the next time, uh, lacoon of day with the help of God. Bawalum to Galer Chiakana, Sonus Agus Grawl. I wish you peace, happiness, and love. And I thank my beautiful guest today, Carrie, for coming on my show. Good day, Shiv Sloan. Bye, Carrie. Bye bye. Bye. bye.